the rivalry between Tom and myself at a personal level was kind of laughable. Obviously, between the two of us, we want to beat each other and, and we're competitive. We were definitely pushing each other. You know, we would comment on each other's manoeuvres. Oh, I saw you do that one in training, it's pretty nice. And he's like, yeah, no, we've been working on that for a while. And I'd be like, yeah, we've been watching you in the data. What, what do you mean? And then he'd say, oh, you know, we see that, you know, you, you're basically foil attacking all the time now. Yeah, yeah, no, we learnt that from you, Tom. What, how do you know that? It's like, it was just supernatural for us to do that because throughout our whole lives, you know, growing up, ever since we're about 10, we've known each other. That's what we did. Both of our minds were focused on Marseille and the million dollar race. And we knew that it was gonna get tense in the future. But at that point there and then, I think we both smiled and thought, this is good, we're both winning. And we're both happy. Bonjour, this is it, event number five, the grand final here in Marseille. Well, what a weekend of sporting drama. These fans are going to see building strong wins. Everything was starting to come together in Marseille. The, the level had really improved. The teams had got a lot more time in the boats. And a lot of the, the back markers were now, you know, starting to challenge the front markers. And, and we were starting to see the racing product as it should be. Tom Slingsby had stamped his mark on the series at the very first event in Sydney. He'd won all but one of the races. And he had, you've got to say, he had most of the season his own way. But Nathan Outridge had had this graceful touch on the F50 that when he got it right was spectacular. But both teams, at their best, were untouchable. Um, <laughs> welcome, everybody, to uh, Marseille. A million dollar week. Exciting week, guys. Not everybody gets a chance to be in a position like this to race for a million bucks. So, um, good fun, good times. We're going to do well. You can feel it. Sail GP is bragging rights for the sailors. And if you want to up those bragging rights and really make it mean something, you add the biggest prize in sailing into the mix. A million dollar prize for us is something we haven't really competed for. We've never competed for money. We've always competed for a prize. Um, and so it was something new that we had to, had to do. And oh, look, there's a lot more pressure when you've got a lot of money riding there because this is money for the team, for all the team members, their family. Uh, yeah, people had planned to buy new pools if they won the money and different things like that. If you're Tom Slingsby or Nathan Outridge, seven figures in the space of a year are a reality to you. But if you're Dylan Fletcher, of course you're going to let it all hang out. And of course you're going to try and sail the boat on the edge. I think it coloured a lot of the different approaches that we saw to sail GP in that first season. In the sail GP, there's a few things like we talked about, and so we chose to take risks at times that, you know, maybe push the boat harder and sail the boat differently. And we saw, I think we saw the French team sort of the complete opposite in my eyes. They sometimes had some good races, but they were always the safest team by miles. And you didn't look at them and go, oh, well, they're going to, going to be able to challenge the Australians or the Japanese in 15 knots around a race course unless someone else has problems. And we were like, that's not us, you know, we want to be able to challenge them. Yeah, we're going to make mistakes and we're going to make more mistakes than anyone else. But the more, every time we make a mistake, we learn from that and then we're going to be closer to those guys going forward. <laughs> you look at the way the British team started that season. Two third places in first Sydney and then San Francisco. He was the dark horse, he proved that. He was progressing at such a phenomenal rate. In that first season, there was a huge amount of pressure on these skippers. They've got a global platform, an international platform, showcasing sailing at the highest level. They can make a name for themselves and they can stamp their mark on Sail GP. But if they make a mistake, that seat is up for grabs. And Dylan Fletcher knew that. He knew that he couldn't languish at the back of the pack and expect a sponsor to come on board and fund another season. And he knew, I imagine, that Sail GP were 
Like, he's got that dark horse tag, but at some point, you've got to deliver on the dark horse tag. With just eight points between the third and the sixth place, uh, are you are uh, a contender? All we need is uh, GBR to do another big nose dive and take themselves out. <laughs> uh, Japan to break their boat, that helps, and then uh, Rome to tip it over again, and we'll be, we'll be fighting pretty strong. Good start there by France, also by the USA. Australia a little bit further back there. OK, a little line patch here. Happy to keep it fast for this next pressure. Just so you know the wind's on our hip. Who's going to blink first? It's through the finish is Team Japan for a win. It's going to have to attack. Australia attacking now, so we should see a cross right. fairly soon. We've got a good four-way boat race. It's going to be game on here at the top gate. Who can nail this next tack? Okay. Sharper turn. How's that for a turn? They're in the zone. Keep it very light. I see the finish mark to left. And Australia now over for win number two. Yeah, Nathan's obviously going for us in the pre-starts. And, oh, yeah, like, that's fine. Doesn't bother us, even if... We start a little back, we know we're going to come through well, so he can keep trying all he wants. He had a fourth in that one and we won, so uh, yeah, he's got to do better than that, I guess. Both that starts, a great start there between Japan and Australia. Both boats right on the limit there. There it was is... nothing between them and that start. Just as we thought the Japanese have done a good job, they've just got to duck in behind the Aussies who had right away on the start of attack. But it is back on, it is close. Here we go. Yep. Flying in towards Marseille and the city front to take a race number three victory. Is Japan over the line for well, race number three? That was a lot of fun, that race. Mate, like, how cool is that? We're racing against. You know, some of the best sailors in the world in quite a tricky venue here. And um, we're trying to call points back on the Aussies. And Tommy just flipped me the board as he went past it. Number two. I was hanging up here before. Oh, I don't think you're going to chin up somewhere. Get out of there. Get out. Never tap out. Tap out. Some boys just never grow up, do they? Outside of the personal satisfaction of, of winning this event, we're going to divvy up the prize money amongst everyone evenly should we win. And further than that, we're going to, we're going to keep you know, a bit off the top to invest in season two. We know that season two is going to be more difficult than season one for us particularly because we're going to lose the likes of Goobs and Parco as the nationality rule comes in and changes. So season two, season three is just going to get harder and harder for us as a team. So, you know, this is our opportunity to really take yeah, a win. If you want, we happy to leave it here. That's the, what's up to you guys? Um, we have practice day of racing in Marseille, the final event. But uh, probably the biggest story of the day is what we don't got, and that is our wing trimmer, Kyle Langford. He's man down, so uh, we've had to go back to the A team. Jason Waterhouse on the wing and me in flight control. Dynamic is a, it's a huge part of our sailing team. Um, even, even our spare sailor, Kinley Fowler, is so important in our team dynamic. He's, he's with us everywhere we go. He's in, in the bus with us every morning we go there. He's out on the water with us. He's training with us. He's jumping in when the grinders need a break. He's as much of the glue as anyone in our team, you, you need people like that. You need a squad that's um, very close and, uh, and that have been through highs and lows together, so it's not all new territory.
question about it. There was a marked drop in performance on the Australian boat when Kinley Fowler stepped on board. It illustrated perfectly how tight that Australian team had become. That even with Kinley, a very proficient sailor, you could see the boat wasn't working. But, no, I'll get someone else to do it. I don't want to do it. Hey, Jason, do the interview. Tommy doesn't want to do it right now. I'm so angry, I don't want to talk about it. I'll throw your camera overboard. Actually? Yeah. Yeah. Why won't any of the guys give interviews today? <laughs> it probably is my job to sort of rally the troops when things aren't going well, but I'd say I'm not the best at it. And, and I'm not angry at the guys on board. I'm always angry at myself for the mistakes I make. Uh, do you stop being mates uh, when there is one million dollar on the line? We want the bragging rights this weekend, and so um, we'll be doing everything we can um, to, to put him off his game, to put his crew off his game, and um, we're looking forward to the, the weekend evolving with a really good match race. And, you know, everything we've done this season is to prepare for, for this one 10 minute race, and, um, you know, one or two mistakes, it could be really costly. So we just keep focusing on that. And each day between now and then is just a stepping zone to, you know, the, the ultimate race. Great start. He has nailed them all weekend. He is flying. Great sport as well. Under the fleet gives him all the options. Oh, oh. Hit a bit slow there on the jibe, oh, surely. But... Just inside the Chinese. French on our hip. Bit of pressure, sir. It looks like pressure Look at Philippe Bisson coming in, picking his ley line, keeping it simple. Right-hand side, all right, and they are now leading this race, Shirley. So, Tom Slingsby has nailed that seaside of the course. In one tack, the Australians have gone from third to first. The Australians, what an absolutely awesome job. Nice work, fellas. Good hustle. And off they go. Phil Robertson might have got that start. Chinese firmly in the battle for that last place on the podium. Third spot, it means a lot. Currently, five points adrift of Great Britain. So Phil Robertson, he's got one more work to go. China and Phil Robertson. Awesome job. Holy heck. We are here for a few more days. Yeah. Spend all the money. Yeah. And then we go on the course of it. You're going to go in dead, are you? Yeah. yeah. We're going to buy another house. Yeah. Uh, today, is, today is the most important day of the year for our team and for this event. And a lot's going to come down to a 10 minute race. So uh, it's pretty exciting. You know, I think everyone's quietly confident. We know that on average, the Aussies have beaten us in more match races than we've beaten them. They've beaten us on serious points. So we're going into this match race probably as the underdogs with nothing to lose and a lot to gain. So uh, I think everyone's excited for that little challenge. I love the mentality of we pick up when you make a mistake, we'll take that five, 10, 20 meters and then not give it back to you. And Nathan Outridge, he doesn't really do this type of racing. He, he can pick the win better than 99.9% .9 of the people in the world. When he's on, he's so strong and he's very hard to beat. And it's very hard to beat him at that game. My general thing with him is to keep the racing really close and, and draw a mistake. And then if I do get ahead of him, is to stay with him because I don't want someone as talented as Nathan Outridge on the other side of the racetrack picking wind against me because he could very well beat me. It's been a really good week. Our uh, practice racing wasn't ideal, but we had just a different setup, so we got the big man back. Um, so it's, uh, it's back to plain sailing for us. Races, a couple of good ones.
The paparazzi's here. <laughs> oh. Oh. Who's this? Hey, buddy. <laughs> hey. Hey. It's, it's an important thing, the composure on board these boats, because if you get too caught up in the moment, if you get too aggressive and try and really force situations with the other boats, it can easily backfire on you. The approach we take is as relaxed and calm as I can be about all the situations. I'm always observing what the other teams are doing. So if you're confident in the skills that you have with your people on your boat, then you're kind of going through the motions, sailing the boat at its optimal, minimising your mistakes, minimising your risk. And every now and then there's an opportunity where you've got to fight and push and make the pass and then you calm it down again. I'd said, you know, to our team throughout, the, the race will come down to a couple of mistakes and um, whoever makes the least mistakes or no mistakes will win. They've got a lot to contend with, it, plus the fact they've got a million dollars hanging straight over the top of their head for the win of this race. So much, much, much to play for. Get his nerves in, there's a penalty Australia, early entry. Aussies have a penalty, no? I actually couldn't believe it. Tom Slingsby dominated the season with Australia and he's got first entry into the box because they're leading on points. And he incurs a penalty. First entry into the box is like the serve in tennis and suddenly he's just handed that away. He's literally given Nathan Outridge the advantage for this race in the first seconds. Here we go with three seconds to go. Two, one, the grand final is on and it is Japan on the top end of the course and Australia below. Japan doing a nice job there. Will they get across to the first marks? Well done to both boats. We're only about two boat lengths apart. A little bit of wing wash coming on the Australians, but I don't think it's going to bother them that much. Japan through through the first mark. In first place, will Australia jibe off early or are they going to try and push them over? Looks like they're going to jibe off early. There goes the board down. My wheel, Trent. Right. Copy that. Trim call it goes, your wheel. He goes with. Coming down. But Japan looked great from that left-hand side at this stage. I think we can. We're just going to watch the traffic. Okay, good. Australian setting one. up now. Yeah, we'll go left mark here. It's close the mark. And they have nailed that ley line to the left-hand mark. The Aussies up now around the left-hand gate as we're looking at it. So, big decision, big splitting decisions there between the two boats. And nothing between these boats, which is exactly how we wanted it. Be able to roll over the top of the Japanese and come into this into this uh, zone first. Oh, is it? Oh, very, very close there. Australia, Japan try to get up underneath the Australians and push them off. Not sure whether he had an over, overlap there. We'll soon see from the umpires. Japan got really badly hurt out of that, Shirley. Terrible. No boat speed. They went very aggressively to to get the penalty. And has that been the move, the million dollar move that lost him this race? Sail GP a grand final and it is the Australians Tom Slingsby leading the charge into this race. Got a couple of tacks to go. He's going over to possibly cover the Japanese. It all started with a win in Sydney, then an emotional victory in San Francisco. They were beaten in New York. They dominated in Cows. It's time to get up and party. Australia is the 2019 Sail GP champion. Ladies and gentlemen, Australia is the 2019 Sergio B Champions! Sail GP's mission statement was to redefine sailing. And hand on heart, I truly believe they did that. I think they did it at the first event when they put six F-50s on the same course at the same time. To me, that, that spectacle was breathtaking, no matter where it was, no matter what the conditions. I also think Sail GP succeeded in creating 
an incredibly high performance, yet one design class of racing. So you take away that research and development element that so often falls back on how much money you have backing you. And instead, it's all about bragging rights for the sailors. It's, it's such a pure format in that sense. I mean, I think in professional sports, uh, there's some organisations that you can, basically you've got an agreement with the owner that you're there for a fixed term and you do, you do your best and go along, and, but you're always safe. Uh, I think I've learnt with Russell Coots and, and Larry Ellison that they're looking after their product of Sail GP and they know that they need the best sailors in every country. It's in, we want you to perform to your absolute best and if, if you don't, we'll find someone that will. And some people don't like that sort of thing uh, hanging over them and they think that sort of pressure um, isn't gonna bring the best out of them. And that's fine, but for me, I know that does. I, I love the idea that if I'm not performing as well as I should, we've got a huge pool of sailors in Australia, I'll get replaced. And I know that that keeps me training in the mornings, it gets me getting up and, and doing the extra time on the water because I know if I'm not performing to the ability I should be, uh, I'll get replaced and it's good, it's great motivation and I think that's the way it should be run all the time. It's probably part of our sport at times, you know, you can't always get it right and sometimes we, had, we did have some bad luck go our way but ultimately I still think I'm proud of how our team sailed and how we operated that year. We were, even the fact that we were within a shout of coming third having missed so many races and the position we were in just shows how much better we were in reality than those other teams. That's all my mindset was at the end of that Marseille event was like, oh, well, that was horrendous, that finished. But you know what? Bring on season two and we're going to come out, you know, fighting and we'll be there in that match race when it comes down to the end of the year. I think really stacking the boat so heavily in cows, injuring some of the team was, was a big blow. But was it enough to get him thrown out? The fickleness of top sports, you know, um, it's tough. You have these moments sometimes that define the future and, you know, the immediate future for Dylan was defined, uh, you know, on those times. I think if you'd have given Dylan Fletcher another season in that boat, he would have been up there and contending, 100%, 100%. But if you have a paid seat with one of the biggest names in sailing come along, how do you say no to them? One of the all-time great, the greatest Olympic sailor in history, Ben Ainsley. Absolute pleasure to formally announce that Ben Ainsley is coming on board with the Great Britain Sail GP team. If season one was good, you know that season two is just going to be out of this world.